you want to tell us about um, the Venice Biennale and the door handle designs for that. What happened? How did you come to do this design? When I was invited to the Venice Biennale to the present my work in the Finnish pavilion, I knew that there would be uh, great architects like Frank Gehry and uh, Peter Eisenman and so forth around. So I decided, with huge projects, so I decided to uh, make an exhibition on architecture in miniature. And my projects until then had been quite fairly small, but I decided to have small tactile things and I produced maybe about three dozen or thirty door handles as an example of uh, the small scale and I have al always been also in interested in, in uh, architectural courtesy which uh, is not very much talked about and the uh, door handle is the smallest element which can express courtesy it can, you know, invite the hand in a kind manner. So I, I wanted to make my exhibition about small things rather than the big things around. And how did how was that received by the public at the Biennale? Well, I wasn't there uh, uh, long enough to really know. I, I I guess positively, at least at least it was it was something different from the others. Uh, I also have always wanted to uh, emphasize the tactile element and uh, that was part of my my message in the in the Venice exhibition that uh, perhaps vision is not the most important sense in architecture. I think it is it might well be tactility. Even through vision, we we touch things, we touch surfaces and shapes, and uh, we sense uh, temperature and coarseness and and uh, and uh, subtleties uh, through vision. Maurice Merleau-Ponty says beautifully, "Through vision, we touch the sun and the stars." And it was for the Finnish pavilion, the exhibition, the Finnish pavilion. Do you think the handles represent Finland or Finnish traditions? Well, I I never think about Finnishness as a theme, except that I I know how important my uh, background, Finnishness and Finnish landscape. Uh, is to myself and to everybody's uh, identity. Um, I th I think motives like that or messages like that uh, come enter your work through your personality rather than as a thematized uh, intention. I believe that you have to work in any art field uh, as a whole person and you paradoxically you express the world through your own character you internalize the world and um, for me it's an unbearable thought that I would express myself in my work I want to express something about the world and I've, I'm fairly emotional while I do work but before the work is finished, I want to pull myself away from it. What do you mean by handshake of a building? The, there are two or three aspects of the building where one becomes in a gets into in a bodily contact with the, with the building. The first one usually is the main door. You open it uh, with your own body weight and, and muscles, and then you touch the building through the door pull or door handle. And uh, that greeting 
almost unconscious greeting can be a friendly or negative one. So I have wanted, if possible, to always make a special door handle for my buildings to, to somehow introduce the build, building intimately to the person who enters. When you designed the handles, you mentioned um, that you d um, went through hundreds of sketches. Yes. As, as what did you learn during the drawing? Well, drawings are an extension of your mind and, and your, your body. When you draw, at least when I draw a line, I'm not looking at the line, I'm sensing the line through my skin. So when I'm making a drawing of a door handle, I'm not looking at the door. At the drawing, I'm holding that object in my, in my hand. So the touch and tactility and materiality and weight and everything is already there. Um, I think that's the essence of, uh, of a drawing, that it helps you to imagine in a c concrete manner and, uh, and uh, determine aspects that uh, are a bit difficult to imagine, like weight, weight of things. Do you feel through drawing? Yes, yes. And how how were the prototypes made for the handles? Well, I was a close friend of uh, Tapio Virkalas, and I knew that uh, he had a prototype maker, a, a fantastically skilled uh, metal worker. And uh, uh, already before Tapio died, I began to uh, have uh, his former pro prototype maker do, do objects for me, and, and small objects and prototypes. I have always ha had been in close contact with cabinet makers and metal workers, and uh, I always advise my students everywhere, don't waste your time being friends with uh, architect colleagues, seek uh, artists and craftsmen, because they expand your, your capacities and personality. I have sometimes written that everyone is, can only be as good as his or her friends. Friends are so Im important and it's important to have makers among your, your friends. So it was this person, and I would still be making uh, objects, but, but he stopped uh, working, so I, I didn't have, uh, have the extension of my own hands anymore in, in his personality. And tell us about the materials that you chose um, to work with for the handles, the different materials. Well, for practical reasons, I, I have used uh, bronze. Uh, when you uh, cast bronze objects, you can make the original in in um, uh, clay or, for instance, uh, for, for these tiny little uh, objects, the original is made in clay. For bigger objects, it, uh, the original is made in sometimes in, in uh, uh, cardboard which has been then, you know, s smoothened by sandpaper. Uh, I developed for my little uh, uh, sculptural objects a, a new method which I have entitled Lost Cardboard Method. The traditional Renaissance and even uh, earlier method was uh, Lost Wax Casting. I make or made uh, originals in, in cardboard which was then placed inside uh, casting uh, material ceramic and burnt the cardboard burnt away to create the hollow.
in the same way that the wax was melted away from from the cast or, or the or the mold. And what about using materials like leather on the handles? Well, I in some handles I, I used leather also. Alvaraldo used leather in some of his uh, uh, handrails and, uh, and door handles just to experiment with that kind of subtlety. In some of the door handles there are also wood parts, particularly very he heavy, strong wood like Ebenholtz, the, the black, black wood. Just to, you know, Every material has its own subtle sensi sensitivity. I, I would rather speak of an erotic uh, element in, in architecture, which also is not hardly ever discussed, but I, I think the task of architecture is to somehow sensualize and eroticize our relation with the world. And, uh, materials do it uh, very, very powerfully. And where do you source the Ebenholtz from? From, uh, I, I can't even <laughs> remember. Um, Lumberyards uh, and sellers of exotic <laughs> woods are fantastic places. When I was young I used to go to these shops just to smell them and touch the wood. <laughs> um, tell us about the different scales of handles from public to private buildings. Yes, uh, the scale is very essential in architecture and uh, architecture always has to deal with uh, different scales from the touch of uh, two fingers to the, you know, uh, full body encounter and then finally a, a more distant uh, observation. Um, uh, that articulation of the scales is very important for me and um, that there are details that somehow speak to you at different scales. I have always been very uh, interested in edges because uh, the e edge can be almost frightening and, and aggressive or then it can be you know, inviting. M most of my objects are, are, have always a bit rounded edges because of that, for that you know, uh, invitation to touch. But also in larger scale, like uh, in Michelangelo's buildings, uh, the profiles invite you to touch uh, because they are so beautifully molded and somehow derived from the human body. The uh, profiles in his work are like human veins and, and, and muscles and uh, I think architecture can somehow unconsciously represent the human body uh, and, and suggest human presence. I think that's the perhaps the most essential aspect of, of detail is to to create that, that presence and also to create that presence of, of a maker like when you are looking at a fine piece of art say a Vermeer painting at close distance, you imagine the painter and you finally you become the painter yourself. And I think uh, in, in, in the same applies to architecture. Architecture can evoke the ways that it has been built and, and you associate with the builder and maker and that enriches the, the, the impact of architecture. It's not just a distant visual thing, it becomes, you know, your friend. What do you think about craft? Craft has disappeared. Uh, 
very much from, from architecture through industrialization or industrialization has replaced craft. And the handles, the door handles? The, they, they represent craft to me and they, they are important. I, I have sometimes thought that uh, Alvaro Altos, one of his, one of the reasons for his his great success was that he was working in an age when he could simultaneously use industrial methods and craft methods. And uh, nowadays there is a, uh, an attitude that uh, if you use special items, craft made, they become too expensive. It's not true. Things like this casting, you know, door handles, they are not more in, uh, expensive than, than ones you buy from the shop. You just need to have the energy and time and interest to make them. This is really interesting what you're saying about the role of combining mass-produced um, high-tech building technologies with yes. more old-fashioned. Can you talk more about that in terms of... Um, well, design? architecture, buildings are always composites of numerous parts and a skillful architect uh, adds aspects that somehow represent or remind one of uh, handmade things in the same way that architecture can also remind us of nature through abstraction and, and suggestion. Um, um, Architecture consists of material and practical things, but also immaterial and, and emotional, experiential things. Um, I am much more interested in the experiential things and the, the experience of a thing than the object it, itself. Uh, I think every, any any artist should should really focus on. What, what he or she or an outsider feels. How were your handles discovered for production by Ize? That I do not know. I have not asked. <laughs> I was just pleasantly surprised. I have also made quite a number of, <coughs> of furniture prototypes, tens, tens of them they are everywhere around also in the storage room in the basement. I have never offered them to any any manufacturer. Only some of them have been found, like this uh, dining room chair by a, an American architect, Professor Lady, who wanted to have, I think, ten of them produced. And what do you think about the current state in terms of architects' role um, in designing interiors and and these sorts of details and how that's evolved, the sort of diminishing role of the architect in having control of the interior. I think it's sad. I think it's sad. That's one of the reasons why architecture becomes so, uh, what I say, distant in a way. Uh, there is a feeling of sameness, uh, whereas a, a little detail can create an atmosphere of uh, uniqueness. And again, I think Alvarado is a very fine example of uh, how he had his, his signature on each building. Naturally, he did not have the capacity to, to work on every detail himself. He had assistance. But through his career, he developed a, a wide collection of approaches and details, solutions, standard products, which then the office workers could combine in a new you know, manner and create the feeling of the hand of Alvarado, although he might have been very distant from the job. What do you learn about uh, from, from the smaller scale objects in terms of the bigger scale design? that? exchange or vice versa from the bigger to the smaller scale. How does one inform the other when designing a door handle?
Does that potentially... Well, there is a tendency in my profession to to place a special value on, on big things. The big projects are the important ones. I have never thought that way. The small things are perhaps more important because there are uh, less options to choose from. Uh, I have always liked the small, small things most and my favorite job has always been to, to be given an ugly old thing which I am then asked to improve, make more beautiful by a minimum number of moves. The fireplace at our summer place, which was built in the 19, in 1950, was one of the ugliest fireplaces I I had seen, and it gave me headache always when I came to the room. I changed it with uh, a minimum uh, amount of cuts, and now every time I step into the room, I I enjoy the beautiful fireplace. That's the kind of uh, task that I like where limits are very tight and the limits are very clear and then also the criteria of whether you have succeeded or not is very clear. And what's the smallest thing you've designed? Well the smallest probably is a... Uh, uh, what, what do I have it? I have it in my pocket. A gold coin which commemorates uh, 100 years of Sibelius um, Finlandia composition. This was a competition organized by the uh, Mint of the uh, Bank of Finland. And uh, usually architects work in scales like uh, 1 to 10, whereas with this I worked in the scale of 10 to 1. I, I had to make the coin, which is the size of my uh, thumb, uh, this size. And those transformations of scale, are I think they are both exciting, but they are also very uh, informative. I, I, that's also the uh, benefit of sketching, that you can sketch in any, any scale. You, while you are thinking of an object or a, or a building, you can look at it at different distances, as it were. You can take it in your hand and look very closely or from a distance. And uh, that zooming back and forth is almost a physical thing, which makes you uh, grasp and understand what you are what you are doing in architecture up in the architect's work uh, every building is bu constructed in the architect's imagination before it's uh, built uh, in real in the real world and I make at least 10 or 15 projects, variations for each project. So for every building that is built, I have built at least 15 immaterial buildings, but I have gone through the construction process.